Um, I had innocently accepted the invitation to the opening um, because I, I thought it looked really interesting and then Jacques noticed that it would be done for the evening um, because I was, I was really drawn to this, uh, to this art um, in, in, in the invitation which really um, um, struck me as, as, as something quite special. Um, I don't, I don't this is one of the third, is that some of the things that I thought were really good about geometry and infinity and everything like that, you could have said already, so I'm not going to say that over again. Um, I do want to say something about the importance of this sort of work at this time, because of course, um, right at the moment, um, the support for the arts and humanities is under extraordinary threat, uh, wherever you turn, whether you turn to the sort of work, and it's wonderful if it's work supported by local authorities uh, in Great Manchester, I think that's really enlightening. But of course our local authorities are facing cuts of up to 20% in their funding. <coughs> and um, that is going to affect the ability of local authorities to do this work. It's going to affect us in all sorts of ways. It's affecting us in universities in terms of the fees that we're going to have to charge uh, for courses. So just at the time when we should be reaching people, uh, we should be providing them with support, we are faced with some extraordinary challenges. And I do want to congratulate everybody who's been involved in putting this together because I know what dedication it takes. Uh, to, to make this work happen. Uh, I think, um, by definition, anybody who's got this far is an optimist. Um, and um, I think that means that we will find solutions to these sorts of challenges in the future. We will find ways of working that make sure that really important uh, creative opportunities like this um, are occurred for both artists and for those of you who love the arts uh, and come and support uh, these sorts of events. And I think those of you who love the arts and support these sorts of events are in a way just as important as the artists themselves. I'm sure the artists would agree. Um, so so it's, a, it's a privilege to be here. As Jacques mentioned, I'm, 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 an, I'm an archaeologist. Now, one of the things that archaeologists spend a great deal of time <coughs> worrying about is an interesting philosophical question, uh, which is not a small one, and that is what's the origin of life? Um, because we now know that we have an evolutionary lineage that takes us right back to the primates and goes back about five million years. But somewhere along that line, somewhere on that transition, you know, through for those, those earliest Australopithecines, through through those sort of slow millions of years, at the point of transition, where our ancestors actually became human in the way that we would understand humanity. And it, it, it might seem strange to you, but it's remarkably difficult to define that particular point. Uh, and what we now know, and what, what, what a lot of us would, 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 would think, is that the key transition um, that took place where we would recognize people who went before as like us, uh, it took place probably around about 110 or 120,000 years ago. Um, interestingly enough, we're pretty sure it took place in southern Africa. So the happy news, all of you, is that you're actually South Africans. You didn't know that, <laughs> actually. Um, and that's the time when, when, when the, the critical evolution took place where we became what we call anatomically modern. In other words, if you had encountered somebody from about a hundred, uh, uh, a thousand years ago, they would basically be like you um, in, in intellectually and, and, and physically. But, but what's that definition? What's that point? Because you can't see it in the skeleton. Um, you can no longer see it in practical terms. All sorts of animals make tools and use tools. And what, what most of us now are going to do, who think and write about that, would say, is that two crucial things happen around about them that actually uh, uh, define the notion of what it means to be a modern person. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, art. And we begin to find evidence uh, for the first conscious uh, expression of art. And the other, and it might seem initially rather strange, <coughs> is burial of the dead. Because burial of the dead imply the notion of the afterlife. Um, if, if, your, if your concern is purely hygiene, you don't waste time burying a dead person along with ritual objects and other, things, other sorts of things of affinity or affection. You basically dispose of the body in an efficient and effective way. So what we see as the definition of humanity is the combination of a notion um, of time combined with a notion of expression. And, many to many, and, and, and you can see in an exhibition like this, which goes back uh, to some of these basic forms of expression, uh, such, as this, you know, such as the notion of infinity, the notion of form uh, beneath substance, some of those sorts of essential ideas of expression that really come into the essence of, of, of what we are. So that's, 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 that's one point. And the other point, of course, is what we do as archaeologists is we're intensely interested in what material things mean 
and that's really what archaeology is, a study of the material world around us and how we express ourselves through those meanings in objects that we make and use. And it, it's fascinating, and Jacques gave a, a really interesting lineage there of those ideas of geometry and expression going deep into the Islamic world. I mean, my, my, my main experience is archaeology in Africa, um, where we had these forms of expression going right back. I mean, the decoration, the geometric definition of the decoration on early forms of ceramics, for instance, which marked the spread of the first farming community across Africa. They're marked out still in the, um, in the remnants of the shards that are left behind. And one of the great things um, about being an artist working in clay is that it lasts a long time. Um, and in the case of quite a lot of the archaeological records, many thousands of years. And so you see inscription uh, of form and identity in that. Uh, you see it, of course, in the wonderful flowering of Islamic Africa. Um, whether you're talking about West Africa and the early Ghanaian kingdoms, or whether you're talking about the most extraordinary corpus of records that are in the city of Timbuktu, uh, which has one of the richest collections uh, of uh, archival material uh, in Arabic script uh, in the world. Um, and then, of course, you see it in North Africa and into Europe. And you've only got to go to a place like Alhambra in Spain to sort of see, the, to see the connection uh, between those, those, those Islamic origins and our old and very complicated, mixed, syncretic sort of culture uh, of, 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 of Western Europe. So when we look at that, we can see those sorts of connections between the past and the present. And I think that an exhibition like this, a collection like this, really takes through a lot of those themes in fascinating ways. So thank you for inviting me to say a few words. Thank you. And I'd, I'd really like to thank all of you who worked so hard for the song, of the artists, uh, the, the, those who organised uh, the exhibition. And I'm quite sure that as we go into this more challenging future, we're going to find all sorts of magical ways of making these sorts of things happen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.